morning and welcome. And as Don indicated, this is our ninth trip down here to recognize annually the Hall of Fame class. And uh, each of you are very much deserving to be here. On behalf of the WPAL Board of Directors, I would like to begin by sincerely thanking the Heinz History Center Sports Museum, not only for their continued support, but for their efforts in coordinating on an annual basis this event and choosing to host it for us. And I'd also like to thank Mr. Don Rebel for volunteering his professional abilities today to add in a positive way to the event, and also to the print and to the uh, electronic media for being here and for taking time out of your days to publicize what it is that we have going on. Annually each year, the WPIL Hall of Fame uh, Committee, which has been empowered by the WPIL Board of Directors to review and to select very deserving individuals for their accomplishments during their high school career. And the efforts that they put forth are unmatched, and the task is daunting because there's so very many people that have accomplished in such a very extraordinary way uh, throughout their career. So it's a very difficult task, and the people that they arrived at this year you will soon find are so richly deserving. That committee is chaired by a gentleman whose passion and dedication is unmatched. It's a gentleman who assists me on a daily basis in the office, and I just would like to introduce to you Mr. Jim Collins to go over for you how difficult the task was. Mr. Collins. Thanks, Nominations for the WPI Hall of Fame are made considering the nominees' achievements in interscholastic athletes from within the WPIAL as well as contributions to the WPIAL. This year, the Hall of Fame Committee reviewed more than 150 applicants for inductees in our ninth class. That was a daunting task, we met three or four different times, going over information that we compiled, information that was sent to us, and we finally came up with a class of 14 individuals. It includes seven athletes, four coaches, one heritage athlete, uh, a heritage athlete is one, I'm giving away someone's age here, I guess. A heritage athlete, uh, I hate to say it, but I, I'd be eligible in heritage category. Whose <laughs> uh, graduating class in high school was 1960 or before. If you're 1960 or before, you're a candidate for the heritage category. Uh, we will also be honoring, in our banquet in June, uh, a gentleman who was a contributor to the WPIAL for many years a contest official, and we'll also be honoring and recognizing two teams, both of which won WPIAL championships. One of them was also a PIAA champion, and the other one would have been, except that the PIAA championships <coughs> hadn't started yet in football, but they were ranked number one in the state and number five in the nation back then. We also will be holding uh, our sixth annual Courage Award, uh, and it will be presented at the induction banquet. The Courage Award honors those who have demonstrated extraordinary courage in the midst of difficult circumstances while serving as a positive role model. In conclusion, a special thanks to the Hall of Fame committee that has worked diligently in working with me uh, to come up with the 2015 class. Some of them are here this morning, and I would like to acknowledge them. Uh, Jerry, if you would at least raise your hand when I call your name. Jerry DePaulo, sports writer from the Tribune Review. Ann Madras, the director of the Western Pennsylvania Sports Museum. Pamela Cherub, a WPIL female officials representative. Mike White from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Tim O'Malley, as you've already met, our executive director. And Rigo Antonini, who is the retired superintendent and former principal at retired superintendent from Western Beaver. And he also served as a principal at New Brighton High School. Now I think you did all of those things. You're also on the school, school board of New Brighton, right? Uh, anyhow, uh, there was also, we would also like to thank our WPIL board of directors, who each year have uh, very enthusiastically supported uh, our goal of uh, having a WPIL Hall of Fame. And I'm pleased to introduce our chairman of the WPIL board, Mr. Jack Fuller, who was here this morning also. At this time, I'd like to introduce the director of the Pennsylvania Sports Museum, whose hospitality help uh, with the WPIL has been ongoing for many years, and we are greatly appreciative of her efforts. In conclusion, I welcome all of the inductees. It's the most we've ever had at this particular ceremony. And I should also tell you, it's the most local. Uh, everyone, every one of the inductees this time is still living in the area. 
and that's a good thing. Usually we have three or four from California and all parts of the country, but uh, congratulations and you're all very well deserving and I apologize for the parking and traffic problems. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Welcome, everyone, to the Heinz History Center and the Sports Museum. I think I'm the one who has to apologize for the traffic and the parking, not Jim. Uh, we do. There's a lot of construction and new uh, business happening in the strip, which I guess is a positive, but not for people on a rainy morning. So we do apologize for that. Um, every year, I mean, we've been working with the WPIL in a very close partnership for the annual Sportsmanship Summit um, for this Hall of Fame uh, and also um, for the 100th anniversary which we celebrated almost 10 years ago. And this is one of our favorite partnerships of the Sports Museum. Um, partly because your accomplishments of all these inductees this year and from the past eight classes are the inspiration for the generations, new generations of students that we're seeing today. Every year we see 30 to 35,000 students um, just coming on school field trips in this building. Um, that doesn't count all the families that visit with their own children. And your stories live on here at the History Center to hopefully educate those students about what reaching your level of accomplishment means. It doesn't just mean talent. It means hard work. It means dedication. It means understanding teamwork. It means life skills that are important for those students, whether they're athletes or not, to understand what makes you a good citizen of your community, a good representative of your community, and ultimately more successful in life. And those are the stories we hope not just teach those visitors, but inspire them to be the best that they can be. Uh, every year when I stand here, I'm astonished, as Jim said, by the quality of the representatives. We're nine years in and we're nowhere beginning to have to try and fill a class. There are so many good people that we consider every year who have accomplished so much. And not just as the WKL, I think, is both best known for its accomplishments on the football field, but this year we have swimmers and people who competed in golf and basketball and baseball and well-deserving inductees in football. The range of sports, the breadth of area that's covered, yes, the North Alleghenies and the Upper St. Clairs that we know today, but the Penn Hills and the Kiskies and the New Brightons and the other places that are represented by this class, that is our mission here at the Sports Museum, to remind people that Western Pennsylvania has a story, we argue, unlike anywhere else in the country. No place in the city the size of Pittsburgh produced so much success and across so many different sports. So I congratulate you all for your accomplishments in the past, and I thank you for giving us an inspirational story to tell in the future. Thank you. I'm going to cheat like a dog here and sit, so we don't mind that. What we're going to do is we're going to go over the uh, inductees and be asked when uh, I mention your name if you could come up, stand up all the way around because I think that's at the end. Uh, we're going to have a nice, once I sort of slink out of the picture, we'll have a nice uh, photo op for everybody with uh, uh, a great deal of the members of the class of 2015. Well, uh, we'll start with the uh, athletes. And we'll start with Missy Bertiotti of Upper St. Clair, class of 1981. Come on up, Missy. You can give each of them a hand. Bertie Audie was always into the swing of things, one of the best golfers ever from the WPIL. Bertie Audie once tied for sixth place at the 1988 Women's U.S. Open. She was a dominant high school golfer at Upper St. Clair, winning back to back WPIL championships in 1979 and 1980, and a state championship in 1979. She went on to golf at the University of Miami. At the 1984 NCAA Team Championships, Bertie Audi was a medalist and led the Hurricanes to the NCAA title. She also won Pennsylvania State and Western Pennsylvania Amateur Championships before spending 14 years on the LPGA Tour. Besides her sixth place finish at the U.S. Open, she also placed eighth at the 1988 LPGA Championship and had 10 other top 10 finishes. Missy Bertiotti of Upper St. Clair. <laughs> Jeff Christie of Freeport, class of 1987. <laughs> Christie played center in the NFL for 10 seasons, made the Pro Bowl three times. But at Freeport High School, he was a Jeff of all trades, playing fullback, linebacker, punter, and kicker. He was a tremendous all-around player, leading the WPIO in scoring in 1985. His point total included five field goals. 
Christy finished his career with 2,482 yards rushing, 337 career points. He set a number of school records, including the longest field goal, 43 yards. He excelled in any sport. He tried. In the track and field as a senior, he won a WPI championship in the shot put and set a championship meet record in the event. He played varsity baseball as a freshman and sophomore at Freeport and hit 421 in those two years. After becoming an offensive lineman at Pitt, Christie had a highly successful career in the NFL, won a Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and was selected to the Pro Bowl three times. Jeff Christie of Freeport. <laughs> Paul Fela of North Allegheny, class of 1991. When Paul Falo was born, his father put a baseball in his bassinet. And eventually, a baseball and football became Paul's favorite toys. And a diamond and a gridiron became his playgrounds. Falo went on to become a two-sport star at North Allegheny, was the Post-Gazette Athlete of the Year in 1991, and also played both sports in college. At North Allegheny in football, Falo was a quarterback who threw for 2,576 yards in a run-happy offense. He rushed for 844 yards and won WPIL and PIAA titles as a senior. In baseball, he was a top shortstop. He was a three-year starter in 435 as a senior, as well as being named Pennsylvania Player of the Year. He won two WPIL baseball titles, and in his final two years in North Allegheny, the Tigers were 64, 11, and two in football and baseball. Fela had a scholarship to Notre Dame, where he was both a football quarterback and a baseball shortstop for the Fighting Irish. He was taken by the California Angels in the third round of the 1994 Major League Baseball Draft. Spent four years in the minors before going to IUP to play one year as the team's quarterback. He also played quarterback in the Arena League and the XFL. Paul Fela of North Allegheny. <laughs> Joe Lafko, Fraser High School, class of 1984. You might know him these days as the highly successful boys basketball coach at Hampton, who has more than 400 wins. Don't mention Newcastle or on Joe Lafko. <laughs> Let it be known that Lafko still holds the state high school record for career interceptions in football with 37. His record has stood for three decades. In the 1980s, Lafko was a terrific three sports star at Frazier. Besides the state career record for interceptions, Lafko also had 22 interceptions in one season and he caught 119 passes as a receiver for a team that played for the 1984 WPIL Class A Championship. But he also was a star in basketball and baseball. He played for his father in basketball and scored 1,763 career points, including 54 in one game. In baseball, he played shortstop. He had 537 as a junior. After his days at Frazier, he played basketball and baseball at Westminster. Joe Lafko of Frazier High School. Gina Nagarado of Manessin, class of 1996. Nagarado was only 5'3 when she played for the Manessin girls basketball team, but as far as scores go, no one in the history of the WPIL stands taller. Nagarado finished her career as the WPIL's all-time leading scorer with 3,364 points. She's one of only nine players in the history of Pennsylvania girls basketball to score over 3,000 points. She was a post that Fabulous Five selection four times, scored 57 points in one game, and averaged 29.8 points for her 113 game high school career. Don't forget that Nacarado is also an excellent soccer player. Her 154 career goals are still 10th best in WPIL history. She went on to play basketball at Duquesne University. Gina Nacarado, Vanessa. <laughs> Caitlin E. Orstein Fife of Mount Lebanon, class of 2004. In order to become classified as a high school All-American, a swimmer must achieve a certain time in an event. In her career at Mount Lebanon, Orstein made All-American status 25 times in individual and relay events. She won a state championship in the 100 breaststroke four years in a row and twice won the 200 individual medley. She also won numerous WPI titles and finished her career with the school record in six of the eight individual events. She went on to become a dominant swimmer at Washington and Jefferson College, where she was a 14-time NCAA Division III All-American. 
She won eight NCAA titles at WJ and held the NCAA Division III national record in the 200 individual medley for five years. Caitlin E. Orstein Fife of Mount Lebanon. And our final athlete to be honored, Tom Tumulty, Penn Hills High School class of 1991. 25 years ago, Penn Hills was the home of one of the top high school linebackers in the country. Tumulty was selected to the prestigious Great All-American team as a senior at Penn Hills. A ferocious inside linebacker, Tumulty had more than 200 tackles in his final two years at Penn Hills, but also played tight end and caught 31 career passes for 572 yards. He was a Post-Gazette Fabulous 22 selection and the Class Quad A Player of the Year in 1990. And don't forget, he was also a pretty fair basketball player, or excuse me, baseball player, hitting 450 as a junior. But hitting on the football field was his favorite thing. He went on to play for the Pitt Panthers, where in 1991 he became only the sixth player in Pitt history to start his first game as a freshman. He finished his big career as the, third, as the school's all -time, uh, third all-time leading tackler, was drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals, became a starter and played in 31 games in three seasons before a knee injury forced him to retire. Tom Tumulty, a Bengals expert. <laughs> now let's honor the coaches that will be inducted into the 2015 Hall of Fame. First, Joe Hamilton, Blackhawk High School. As football coaches go, he was no average Joe. Hamilton was a head football coach in the WPIL in six different decades in almost a half century. He spent 49 years coaching Midland, New Brighton, Hempfield, and Blackhawk. Hamilton played at Beaver High School in Geneva College before becoming a head coach at Midland in 1966. But he is most known for his days at Blackhawk, where he was the coach from 1976 through 2014 before retiring as the second winningest coach in WPI history with a record of 342, 170, and 11 ties. He is seventh on the state's all-time win list. In 39 seasons of Blackhawk, Hamilton had a 280, 142, and seven record and made the WPI playoff, playoffs 19 times. He won four WPI championships and his team's played in a state championship game three different times. Joe Hamilton. Ed Okowski, basketball coach. The guy known for his flat top crew cut was a cut above WPIL basketball coaches. Okowski started his career as a varsity assistant and JD coach at Midland High School in Beaver County before becoming head coach in 1967. He built the Leopards into a dynasty in only 17 seasons from 1967 to 1984. He won seven WPIL championships and four PIAA championships. He is one of only three boys basketball coaches to win at least seven WPL titles and four state championships. He won six WPL titles in a row from 1972 to 1977, and his record was 322 in 96. Olkowski played high school sports at Beaver Falls before going on to play basketball and baseball at Slippery Rock University. He is a member of the Slippery Rock Hall of Fame. Ed Olkowski. Swimming coach, Corky Simler. <laughs> this guy started as a used car salesman out of college. He eventually became a Rolls Royce among WPL swimming coaches. Simler was part of the WPL record relay team in 1970 when he swam at Gateway. Eight years later, he became North Allegheny's coach. You need seven hands to count all the WPIL and PIAA championships he won. 35 years as North Allegheny's boys and girls coach before retiring in 2013. He won 26 WPIL titles and nine PIAA championships. The boys teams have won nine WPIL championships, including seven of eight from 2006 through 2013 and three state titles. The girls teams won 17 WPIL titles, including seven in a row at one point, five in a row at another point. The girls also won six state championships during his career, Sumler coached 141 swimmers who made All-American status. Corky Sumler. <laughs> Basketball and cross-country coach, Dave Warner. <laughs> the 
There were more than 500 reasons to like Warner as the girls' basketball coach at Brentwood High School. He was one of only a handful of girls' basketball coaches in WPL history to win more than 500 games. On top of that, he also won a PIAA cross-country team championship with the Brentwood girls in 1975. But basketball is where his teams thrive. He coached the Spartans from 1973 to 1997, and again from 1998 through 2005. His record was 536, 239, and his team won 12 section championships. Warner won WPL titles in 1978 and 1979, and was runner-up seven other times. At one point, his teams made it to the title game five consecutive years. He won a state championship in 1982, and was also a runner-up twice. Dave Warner. Two teams will be honored this year. First, the 1990 Penn Hills girls basketball team. This should tell you enough about the talent on this team. Five of the girls ended up playing Division I college basketball and another Division I volleyball. This should tell you a little more. Penn Hills won nine WPIL and PIAA playoff games in the largest classification by an average of 25.8 points. Coach Bill Lynn had other championship teams in his time at Penn Hills, but no team dominated like this one. The team finished 32-1 and with the only loss coming to a strong team from New York. Led by senior guards Janine Joyce and Aaron Malloy, Penn Hills to the WPIL title, winning four games by an average of 31 points per game. The Indians went on to win the state championship with an 86-39 victory over Lancaster McCaskey. The 86 points tied for the most ever scored in a PIAA title game, and the 47-point win is the second biggest blowout in state championship history. The 1990 Penn Hills girls basketball team. The 1971 Kiski Area Cavaliers football team. They are being represented by head coach Dick Diltz, Frank Murray, an assistant coach, and two players, Steve Canis and also Joe Stone. The Cavaliers started the season with only two returning starters. They ended up with one of the most memorable seasons in WPIL. Coached by Dick Diltz, Kiski area went 12-0, won a WPIL title, finished ranked number one in the state, and number five in the country in one pool. The Cavaliers held nine opponents to eight points or less and averaged 32 points a game during an era when teams didn't score many points. Larry Wilson rushed for well over 1,000 yards. Lyman Mike Melito was a first-team All-State selection and made the Big 33 All-Star game, along with quarterback, defensive back Tom Giotto. Russ Clark was a stud lineman and linebacker for that team. The 1971 Kiski Area Cavaliers football team. We now honor our Heritage Award, and the winner from the class of 1952, Tito Francona from New Brighton High School. A few months after his high school graduation, Francona once played for a basketball all-star team in a game against the Harlem Globetrotters. But as an athlete, John Patsy Francona was no joke. Nicknamed Tito at a young age, he was a standout at New Brighton in three sports, football, basketball, and baseball. In football, he was a halfback who also threw passes and was the team's kicker. In football, he won one WPIL title in 1951 and won co-championship in 1950 and was the leading scorer in Beaver County as a senior. He was on a section championship basketball team in 1951 and also was part of a section championship baseball team in 1952. Baseball was his best sport and he went on to play 15 seasons of Major League Baseball. He made the MLB All-Star game once and hit 363 one year with the Cleveland Indians. He hit better than 300 three other times. Tito Santeri is a former manager of the Boston Red Sox and current manager of the Cleveland Indians. Tito Francona, the right. <laughs> this year's contributor goes to Howard Crawford. Crawford has been a loyal member of the WPIL Wrestling Steering Committee for more than 25 years. 
During his time, the committee, Howard never missed a wrestling committee meeting and always accepts match and tournament managerial assignments regardless of the travel distance involved. For many years, he has served the WPIL as a game and site manager at district tournaments, contests in football, basketball, and tennis. Crawford had a successful career as a teacher, wrestling coach, and athletic director at Thomas Jefferson High School. Howard Crawford. Our contest official, winner Kathy Rindilla. As a member of the chapter of women's officials, Rindilla officiated three WPIO basketball championship contests and two PIAA state championships. She is a co-founder of Basketball Officiating Basics, which educates new and veteran officials of NFHS roles and mechanics via classroom sessions, on-court demonstrations, and clinics. Currently, Kathy serves as an evaluator of officials in the WPIL. As a collegiate official, she works regularly in several major Division I basketball conferences and has participated in NCAA Division I and NIT tournaments. An outstanding athlete, Rodella played collegiately for Duquesne University and is a member of the Duquesne University Sports Hall of Fame. Kathy Radilla. And finally, time for our Courage Award. Jamie Vic Moran with David Debbie Vic and also Alan Toy. While coaching girls volleyball together at Kiski Area High School, both were diagnosed with cancer in the 2009-2010 school year. Ellen Toy, the head coach, resigned in 2013 when her cancer returned. She underwent a gastrectomy, having her stomach removed, and returned as coach in 2014. The gastrectomy rendered her unable to do some of the more physical aspects of coaching volleyball. This past year, Ellen has retired from teaching and coaching, Volleyball has been her vehicle and like she intends to stay connected with the sport. Last summer with her husband, she traveled to California and met members of the U.S. women's volleyball team and also served as a virtual coach to the team during the five World Grand Prix, uh, in two, the FIVB World Grand Prix in 2013. Jamie Vic Moran, the assistant volleyball coach, was first diagnosed with lymphatic leukemia at age 14. She fought the leukemia off every time. However, she couldn't win the battle against Graft, graft verdict versus host disease and passed away at the young age of 28 in August of 2012 of an infection following a bone marrow transplant. A remarkable person, Jamie was a star basketball player at Kiss Area and St. Vincent College while battling the disease. Jamie was a special person who touched many kids while teaching math and coaching at Kiss Area. Ms. Moran and Ms. Toy inspired Kiss Area's Jam the Gym volleyball event with the support of their families. Jam the Gym is a volleyball triple header, two high school matches and one college match that benefits multiple cancer charities celebrated its fifth anniversary in September of 2014. Ellen's strength and Jamie's legacy, though their courageous battles with cancer, or through the courageous battles of cancer, uh, has taught all who knew them to never give up. Jamie Vic Moran and Ellen Toy. And that is it. Very impressive. How about another big hand for everybody behind you? So my comment, uh, the panel's uh, representatives for the 1990 team were sent to the Carnegie Science Center by their athletic director. <laughs> so I apologize. They may pop in here, so um, we don't know. Anyhow, yeah, thank you. You're welcome to stay around and meet your people. Anyone who wants to take any kind of a photo, uh, Please do it. Thank you. Yeah, everybody squeeze together.